Margaret Ray never was a member of the band, but she had long, deep roots in the 1937 Floods extended family, reaching back nearly 40 years. We first met the shy, pretty Margaret Ray in the early spring of 1980 when Joe Dobbs brought her to one of those rowdy music house parties that the Flood and Friends had been playing for years by then. And in those days, many of us, while we had lots of respect for female musicians, really didn't think of women as potentially monster guitar pickers. Well, in the smoky shadows of a Southside Huntington living room that evening, Margaret, without saying a word, turned that idea on its head. Yeah, we were blown away. And now listen as the party goers, eager for more, call for a little more testimonial from Margaret. From then on, we would hear a lot of Margaret Ray's crystal clear guitar picking. She and Joe quietly enlisted floodster Bill Hope to form a stellar trio that would showcase their music. And that very weekend, the Flood was booked to play at the Dogwood Arts and Crafts Festival in Huntington's then new Civic Center. And when we got there, we found out that Margaret, Bill, and Joe were also on the bill. From that beginning, the three of them would go on to play gigs all over the state and beyond, with Margaret on guitar, Bill on bass, and Joe doubling on fiddle and mandolin, and all of them singing leads or harmonies. Here's a standout number from that same weekend.
Joe and Margaret's relationship was, well, as we say nowadays, complicated. I loved her the first time I met her, Joe's daughter Diana said recently. Margaret was my sister from another mother. And Margaret obviously felt the same way about the Dobbses. In fact, for a few years in the mid-1980s, Margaret was married to Joe's eldest son, Dale Dobbs. And they even formed the Dobbs Family Band in the late 1980s with Dale on bass backing up Joe and Margaret and other pickers as honorary Dobbses. But by the 90s, Margaret fell on harder times. She was remarried and then she was widowed when Sam, her husband of 20 years, died. And she had health problems of her own. She even gave up her music. Years later, Joe still talked about the sad day when she showed up at his shop, Fret and Fiddle, in St. Albans to sell her guitars. After that, for more than a decade, a lot of us lost track of Margaret. Then, one happy evening, Joe showed up at a flood rehearsal with Margaret by his side. She was frail and quiet. Honestly, we might not have recognized her on the street, but as soon as the music started and we saw that twinkle in her eye, we also saw our old friend again. After that, Margaret and Joe renewed their close friendship. Joe even got her playing music again. Writing on Facebook about that time, Margaret told her friends, I had not played guitar in over 30 years. I had sold all my instruments. Then Joe called me a few months after Sam passed away and invited me to play, and I couldn't play a note, so I started learning guitar all over again. I believe Joe contacting me was a gift from God. Well, before long, she was tagging along with Joe to the rehearsals, and soon Margaret was jamming with the flock. Besides the music, Joe and Margaret took long, memorable road trips from Florida to Alaska and other places all along the way. Those good times made the last years of Joe's life and Margaret's a sweet thing for us in the family flood to watch from the sidelines. And on the last of those trips, in January 2015, as the two wanderers were working their way home from the Smoky Mountains, they made a very special memory for all of us. Before heading back to West Virginia, they took a detour by Mount Sterling, Kentucky, for an afternoon's visit with Roger Samples, who was struggling with his own serious health problems. Raj was one of the co-founders of our band back in the 1970s, and he and Joe had a special relationship, a brotherhood that was apparent every time they made music together for more than 40 years. Well, Margaret knew quite well that she was the solitary witness for a very special moment, so with her phone she captured it for the rest of us. That video, what she shot that afternoon, preserving the last time that Joe and Roger ever played together, are images we will treasure forever. As we will surely also treasure our sweet memories of Margaret. Rest in peace, love.
Shady Grove, I say, Shady Grove, my love, bound to go away. I wish I had a big fine horse and corn to feed him on, and Shady Grove to stay at home to feed him on. Shady Grove, I say, Shady Grove, my love, bound to go away. Well, I went to see little Shady Grove, she's standing in the door, her shoes and stockings in her hand, and her little bare feet on the floor. Shady Grove, my love, Shady Grove, I say, Shady Grove, my love.